Welcome to the show, reviews and discussion podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. They done took my castle. <laughs> I don't have a castle anymore. It's okay, man. It's okay. You can bum out in a treehouse. I don't wanna. Okay. Well, I- I'm sure you'll find a good place for your decorative skull to be placed on. Hey, I'm just gonna have to wander the badlands and build in secret. <laughs> Continuity can't find me. <laughs> you say so till something happens. <laughs> so anyway, also joining us today is Tatera. I, I did not sign up for my tree on my back to be a treehouse. Just want to point that out right now. It's okay, man. And don't be greedy or stingy. You're big. Have you not seen the Pokemon movie? Excuse me, are you calling me fat, sir? Nope, I'm saying no, I... you're in a con- continent. <laughs> <laughs> He's, say- he's saying you're big in Japan tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, well, thank you, Norman. But still, I really want to do that Pokemon review. It's so much fun just to derp on it. <clears throat> Too bad there's no Mantines in there. <laughs> ah! the o- fun fact, the only water type I saw was Magikarp and Gyarados. Well, um, fish-type Pokemon, at least. But yeah. Yeah, because I was going to say Greninja's water type. Yeah, and then like the Blastoid and stuff, but no, nah, what I mean was ocean dwelling Pokemons. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but anywho, we're not talking about the Pokemons because we're going to do Season 9, Episode 3, Uprooted. In this episode, the young six respond to a magic summon from the Tree of Harmony, only to learn it has been destroyed, and it is up to them to figure out the best way to memorize it. Memorialize it? Memorialize it. All right. So, yeah, um, before we get into it, let's do first impressions. Silva. This one's a little hard to pin down. When I first watched it, it was fun, but I just thought, you know, a lot of it was spinning its wheels and not really going anywhere. We watch uh, a lot of things happen, but very little of it comes together at the end. Then I sat and thought about it some more and rewatched it and realized, hey, uh, this is a little, this is actually not necessarily on the characters, but more on their respective cultures. And given that this is the final season, I thought, hey, it's actually nice to have a farewell. So while it's not my favorite of this new season, it is still, I think, a very well done episode. Agreed, agreed. When I was rewatching this, and with your quick take review on it, I kind of saw like, okay, the part where... The student six were getting the permission slip signed by their parents slash elderly slash caretakers. So yeah, I, I was thinking of you in mind when we when they did that. And it was pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting. And overall, this episode was kind of okay. But I'm not gonna overstep my bounds for now. And Tara, what about you? I'm kind of the same here. It was an okay episode for me. Like there were some moments where I mean Actually, one moment kind of reminded me of Thanks for the Memories, but we'll go into that later. But I did like how it turned out in the end. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. Like, we get to see some... Well, we get to see our student six, or we get to see the student six in action or doing stuff. And this is what I've been wanting from the very start, where we get to see the other side of friendship, because... I remember way back when, when season 8, was it, or season 7, where we got Starlight and her friends doing stuff. So I was more hoping of, hey, why don't we see more of uh, Starlight and her group? But we didn't really got that, so that's kind of sad. But at least with this one, we get to see, yay, friendship problem being solved by newbies this time. And what makes it more fun is that we got different races. Is that right, Silver? Species. species. Different species. Right. Different species. So, it is a lot of fun to watch. And you know what? I'm just going to hold it here and... Well, if you guys have not watched it, pause here and go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the show. And well, let's get right into it. So, we start off with the episode with our heroes. Well, actually, Silver Stream flying with Rainbow Dash and keeping up with her. And well... Yeah, keeping up with Rainbow Dash in her Wonderbolt uniform is a test of its own. And guess what? She did it really well. Even did the superhero landing. Yeah! 
Although, how is it hard to keep up with her in her Wonderbolt uniform? Is it like, oh, it's, the uniform is so tight, stupid, sexy, rainbow dash, I'm all distracted. Is that what you're saying, Norman? No, I'm just saying it's more aerodynamic. It gives her plus five speed. Yeah, that too. <laughs> She's on drugs? <laughs> no! no uh, I think well, it's the adrenaline rush. Oh, the p- plus five speed, right there. Torterra, how could you? What? Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> I can't, I can't be- help it. I've got a tree on my back. <laughs> Oh, I see. You're doing the hemp. <laughs> um, uh, no. Uh, silver, silver. Oh, got, Rainbow Dash just got Nana boosted. <laughs> got a, got the reefer madness going. I see how it is. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, uh, Rainbow Dash says congratulations. Um, you're the first Wonderbolt, uh, non Pegasi Wonderbolt. And she got a medal and stuff. And yay, this is just awesome. Like, wow, when did this happen? I mean... I know Silverstream could fly, but I never knew she could fly that fast. So anyway, Silverstream's happy because she's the first uh, non-Pegasi Wonderbolt in the crew. And she says, oh, how can I thank you? This is just amazing and stuff. And Rainbow Dash says, no problem. You can thank me by being our opener act. And at this point, Silverstream panics and she... Wonders, wait, I don't have my uniform, I don't know any stunts and whatever. And we see Ocellus coming and suddenly this is getting strange because she's in her graduation gown and says that she missed a whole year of studies and the final is in a few hours and stuff and they see a falling yak. What? Actually, I've had a dream like that myself, so... Which one? All three? Mostly the school and I, I skipped or missed a class for a whole year. And I'm not ready for the final test, and I get we hold back. Uh, so yeah, I I have that dream even after having left high school. <laughs> That's funny. Well, the, you know what happened after high school, right, Silva? Uh, it never ended. <laughs> Haven't you heard the song? High school never ends. Oh 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 oh. I never uh, heard that song. Same here. Oh, it's uh, let's see. I think it's by Real Big Fish. Oh, them! I remember them from Tony Hawk. <laughs> Wow, really? Actually, no, it's bo- it's Bowling for Soup. Oh, damn. I remember them as a one-hit wonder. Hmm. Well, basically, the attitudes of uh, high school just carry forward into adulthood. Uh, it's rather shameful. Uh, Moving on. Yes, true. And talking about Bowl of Soup, we get to see a huge cup of tea with a dragon on it. Wait, what? So, by this point, it is clearly a dream. Well, it is a dream, but when you first watch it, to me, I thought it was Discord. What do you guys think? Well, I I figured it was a dream, but partly because of just the improbability and all this fine stuff. It was more a question of who's creating this collective unconsciousness, who's drawing them all together. Ah, all right, all right. And you, Tara? Well, for me, yeah, I'm kind of on the same boat because I knew it was a dream. But for a while, I thought it was going to be an episode involving Princess Luna because last time the Key Mark and Crusader, the Key Mark Crusaders, had a bad dream. Luna came in and she guided them, and I thought she was going to make an appearance after the young six went through all their bad dreams. Mm, all right, all right. Well, so I was the only one that thought Discord. Then all right, no problem. But still, um, I- I'll just speak true. We see Gallus having claustrophobia, and we see um, Vincent Tong having a very hard time picking one cupcake. He's having trouble. You're having trouble remembering the name, Norman? Yes. Vincent Tong. Yes, Vincent Tong. There's just a human <laughs> sitting there in front of the, the cupcake stand. <laughs> yeah, there's a human like... in the MLP world now. <laughs> Vin- Vincent Tong is, is now super canon. Yep. Next to uh, Megan. <laughs> I say Vincent Tong for Human in Equestria Gen 5. Who's with me? I agree with that. Okay, send by his name. Oh, God. Uh, okay, remember what you say way back when about Senbar Silver? I've said many things. At first, I thought he would be a more of a neutral ground. Uh, which he still kind of is. He's still pretty mellow. But his poor Sandbar has not gotten to do a whole lot. That'll change when She's All Yak comes into play. Yeah, but... yep. But still, it's, it's kind of bland. So, yeah. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho. Uh, once everybody gathers and they see Hitmer Twilight, and they say, oh, wait, what are you doing, you know, dreams and stuff? Like, what are you doing here? And Hitmer Twilight just says, yeah, guys, I'm not Hitmer Twilight. 
I'm just a representation of the tree of harmony. And you guys need to head back to the tree because the tree needs you. It needs your help. Anyway, um, wake up now. She's calling for the Avengers. Yep. And they all wake up. And here's the part that peeved me off. Oh? Because of the inconsistency. Inconsistency? Yes. yes. Because the colors of the students are not the same as the previous season. True. But I don't view that as a bad thing myself. Really? Yes, really. Because it's not saying that... It's not assigning them a single element and saying, okay, you're the new Rainbow Dash, you're the new Applejack, you're the new Pinkie Pie, yada yada. It's saying that I think it, I view it as basically their their roles are more dynamic. Sometimes they're the element of laughter. Sometimes they're the element of honesty. Sometimes they're the element of kindness. They're not limited to just one thing. It's not a one-to-one relation. They're learning from all the main six. And as a result, I hope that they can embody all the main six's virtues at times. True, but at the same time, too, when you see certain things like uh, Sandbar, he's, he's, how do I put it? He is a kind character. or a, Yeah, he's a kind character. He was the first one to mingle with the creatures and befriend them. And suddenly, he gets a little bit of magic. What? Because friendship is magic and he's friendly. I know. But I do like one thing here that they give generosity to Smolder, which is kind of not what dragons do. So that will be fascinating to see. Norman, that's very speciesist of you. Is it? I am shocked and appalled. Is it not true? Just because it's true doesn't mean I can't act offended on their behalf. Rumph. <laughs> Wait, are you part dragon? Rumph. No, but I'm acting offended on their behalf. Uh. Rumph. Uh, but still, to me, I find it fascinating. Maybe it's a miscolor or something like that. Like, they didn't really think through or they didn't really check out the previous thing, whatever it is. I mean, I feel like having Gallus become loyalty or quote-unquote Rainbow Dash seems a bit a misfire on their part. Like, yeah. How so? That's just me. I don't know. It's like, when you think about loyalty, you think about Rainbow Dash, and when you think about Rainbow Dash, you get that personality of, oh, I'm too hip for school and stuff. Like, I'm way cool and, like, stuff. And having that on the Griffin, yeah, could have been, like, I don't know. Well, Here they Dallas did it. was kind of like that at the beginning of Season 8, I believe. Yeah, the very beginning, but in the end, he got the magic part, and I don't know, maybe it's just me and my headcanon of him being quote unquote an orphan in Griffinstone where he doesn't have anyone and having friends now, like that's what makes it special for him. Like he wants to keep that and that's why he gets the limit of magic. That's just me. Well I was gonna say if you think about it too, I so bad with the names of the episodes, but there was the one where the students had to go through the test under the school with the Tree of Harmony and Gallus and Smolder could have just left them and they could have taken care of themselves. But they're like, nope, we're going to be loyal to our friends. And they they flat out said, you know, most griffins and dragons would have gone by now. Exactly. This is what I like about the show because we can have this silly debate or just conversation about, oh, uh, those characters, they're because they're learning from the school and they're picking up on stuff and blah, blah, blah. Which is kind of true, but you know what? I think we're really dealing so much on this so shall we carry on this is carry on carry over karaoke okay so eddie who they wake up and well well they just wake up uh in the next scene after the intros we see spike polishing the floor with his bare hands or claws poor guy like you have to clean the whole school on your hand and knees wow Twilight's... hey come on that in, so, in some places that's a discipline yeah, but this is whole school, and I think what don't they don't they have janitors? Apparently not. They have Spike. <laughs> Poor fella. Poor fella. But anywho, Twilight pops in, panicking that they only have orange highlighters, and she's in a tizzy because how would the student color code their notes? Oh no! Raise your hands. If or so- it, well, I I highlighted my my books in uh, middle school. And I did such a poor job of it, you think I just spilled ink all over the page. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I, I never understood the highlight thing, you know? I mean, okay, I understand the concept of it, but I never understood doing it myself. Like, 
what? how like what it, like what, did did you get your mom to highlight for you no i don't do it at all oh well then okay then when you write down a note you kind of get it like okay this is this and that is that like Example, if you write down a Pokemon, what's a Pokemon? It is a creature from Japan and stuff. Then they have, what, elementals for them, like, so on. So you kind of pick it up, so you don't really need to highlight it. That's in my opinion. Maybe I'm not a good student. Wait, Pokemon's from Japan? Kind of, I think. Oh, you have a oh lot my to god. learn, Silver. Oh my god. But any, That's all I have right? to say. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Twilight comes in, panicking, blah, blah, blah. Then suddenly, the student pops in. Student pops in and Twilight is in another panic. Wait, did I send out the uh, letter too soon or whatever it is? And the student says, nah, we got a message from the tree. Very close like that, yo. And Twilight says, that's impossible, Ru, because the tree is destroyed. And the students were shocked by that revelation. Yes, that's a terrible thing to hear. I know. So, um, they break down what happened last episode that... Sombra came in, destroyed the tree, but don't worry, uh, everything is cool because we defeated Sombra. And Ocellus says, wait, didn't the Tree of Harmony kind of protect the Everfree Forest or something like that? And Spike says, yeah, don't worry, we, we got that covered too by this old bearded man and stuff. So yeah, it's all good. And the student says, um, if it's possible, we'd like to see the tree. I don't know why it summoned us, but we just want to take a look-see. And so... They are brought there. <clears throat> this is something that I need to point out now. They've never even been to the actual tree, so how the heck would they know where the tree is exactly? They did go to the um, to the uh, castle of the two sisters in the very first, uh, well, in school days. So it's not inconceivable that they went down the stairs and took a quick peek at it. Yeah, that is true. True, actually. and also it could be in the notes that they study. That's why... Although sorry, although that leads to a bit of a, a plot contradiction, because Chrysalis said that uh, the the elements were the, one of the most well-guarded secrets. Their location was quite secretive. So, I don't know if you could have it both ways. Twilight can't tell her students where to find the magical tree of harmony. And yet, yet Chrysalis can't find it easily. But here's the thing also, because uh, the students have the books or student reference and whatnot, like study books, while Chrysalis doesn't. And I don't think Chrysalis is in the right mindset to infiltrate the school. Yeah. No? Well, what about Cozy Glow? Cozy Glow, well, Cozy Glow kind of didn't really need the tree. She did it all by herself. And technically, she would have succeeded if we weren't for those kids and their pesky dog pesky dog you mean the pesky tree yes but anywho um we carry on the students see the tree and it's well broken up and they are well silver what did you mention again like uh stages of grief was it oh yes they went through a rather accelerated stages of grief i mean first there was denial how could this happen then there's anger, both at themselves, saying, oh, if we hadn't gone home, we could have been there for the tree. Odds are they couldn't have saved it. True. Then anger at Sombra. I wish you were here so we could teach him a lesson. Then there's bargaining, where, where this is where Silverstream says, maybe if we all think friendship's thoughts hard enough, the tree will come back, and Tinkerbell will get come back to life. <laughs> uh, I... and, the, and the Care Bears will save their young friend. Oh, not the Care Bears. Or maybe Ash would wake up. <laughs> and maybe the Democrats will have it a worthy candidate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anywho, did that work? All right, which one of y'all mother bleepers didn't wish hard enough? It <laughs> wasn't me. I, bl I blame Norman. What? It's all Norman Norman's did. fault. Yes, Norman didn't believe hard enough. <laughs> no, 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 I believe. You want to know who didn't? Who? Sappy. Oh, yeah, she she couldn't believe because she's not here. Yeah, see, it works out. I don't know. I think Norman's too much believing in Bayonetta. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> oh, he be he's believing that a little too hard, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, just waiting for the sound box. <laughs> you get <laughs> But anywho, they decide that, okay, the tree's gone, so 
let's try and do a memorial thing or mem- memorizing and whatever it's called. And they like the idea. And and when they were about to start, Osiris gets screamed at by Torex. And ah, Osiris turns into a cute rock. Yay. She's quite curvy. Yay. Before I go too far, I, I didn't list the, the last ah. two stages of uh, grief. All right. Which is de- depression, which they were all thoroughly bummed after the resurrection failed. And acceptance, where you integrate it into your yourself and you can move forward, changed, but uh, still able to f- move. Hmm. True, 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 true. And that was also the part that reminded me of Tanks of the Memories, because Rainbow Dash went through the same thing. But exactly. much more harder. Yes. Well, this was an accelerate process. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's easier to accept when you're like, oh my god, my boss is here! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anywho, uh, Torex comes in and scolds Ocellus for running away from the hive because the last time she did that, it almost started a war. Continuity. Yay. The one thing that Silver does not like now because they took his house away. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm coming. I'm working through my own grief. Thank you very much. <laughs> but anywho, before Torex can take Ocellus away, Smolder comes in saying that uh, she's on a quest. A dragon quest. And <laughs> this is the most funniest joke I feel that this episode has. And Torex just says, she's not a dragon. Turns behind and sees Osiris become a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I like how too, though, that be- before she changes to the dragon, Thorax quickly has a shock and then turns around. He's like, oh, I know what she's going to do. Turns around and then she's a dragon. It's <laughs> like, dang it all. Uh, don't you love changelings? It's much more fun. But yeah, um, Torek says no. And, well, all of her friends ask for her to stay because they need her to fix the Tree of Harmony or just do something about it because the Tree of Harmony called them and stuff. You remember how it goes, Silver? Well, basically, they they implore, can they, can they stay? Please, Prince Headwear Twilight, can we stay... And do this for the Tree of Harmony. And she's like, okay, but you have to get permission from all your families. Yep, and here is the fun part. Here is the fun part of, well, the culture or the uh, creatures. And Silva, I'm going to let you take this for a bit because I think you did well in your review. And yeah, me no good. Because I think you (laughs) said words that are informative. He says big words that some people cannot understand. Yes, Yes, I'm just demonstrating my anti disestablishment materialism. Uh... Uh, multi reflection. <laughs> oh, yeah. Multimodal reflection sort of. Yes. My head hurts now. <laughs> but, anywho. Uh... Tech talk, te- tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk. What are you saying? <laughs> Number... Words, 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 words. No, I'm making stop. <laughs> no, I need him to talk. Blarg. But, anywho, Silver. Um, the... Take the next part. All right. Well, basically, we get a quick montage of all the student six uh, getting permission in their own unique ways. We start with Smolder, who wins an arm wrestling contest. Claw wrestling? I don't know. But that's all she needs for Ember's approval to go back. Now, I can interpret this two ways. One is she has to win a trial of strength to prove she's strong enough to represent the dragons. And, in fact, it'd be kind of funny if that was how she got chosen originally. <laughs> Smolder, you've won the contest. Yay! That means you get to go to school. No. <laughs> but when, um, with that in mind, right, when you take a look see at her first appearance when she arrived at school, she was reluctant. That's why I think Ember pulled a fast one on her. Yeah, or it could be that um, she picked one at random and, yeah, you're the runt. Okay, let's go. Oh, what, wouldn't it be interesting if uh, Ember took, uh, what's his name? Uh... Garble? Yeah, Garble. Like, wouldn't that be interesting? Oh, that would go That would go that, over like a Led Zeppelin. I know. Yeah. But just imagine it. Like, um, Ember thinks, okay, uh, Garble is not uh, being nice and whatnot, so let's do an attitude adjustment and uh, make him go to the pony school to have an understanding and try to make him nicer and stuff. It'll be really interesting. Like, I think we've seen it in other shows before. I don't know. I, I could kind of see Cozy Glow just defeated by Garble beating her up. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I have no problem attacking a Philly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, too, probably not. You know what? That's just my idea and what I, what I can think of. But yeah, uh, anywho, uh, carry on. Well, the second interpretation I could think of is that she's Ember is testing Smolder to make sure she's not going soft while being amongst the ponies. Hmm. And either way, Smolder proves it. Next, we have Yona, who's doing a tremendous number of chores for her mom, who I, I went back and checked, and yes, it's the same character they used for her heartwarming flashback. Yak song, <laughs> very long, sing again. Well, but still, this is logical. How do I put this? I think we've all in, been in this boat, and Yona seems to be well-grounded. Very much. So she's doing a bunch of chores for her mom, helping her mom out. At first, I thought she was trying to earn the right to go, but what we'll learn later changed my opinion. Oh, and that is? Well, I guess uh, going further ahead, uh, y the Yak philosophy is that nothing lasts forever. Uh -huh. And so that's why they often smash. They're not attached to physical form. So what she's really doing is caring for her mom and making sure her mom is doing well. Because she knows those relations are important, but our family won't be there forever. Mm, okay. So it's prioritizing. Mm, okay, that's one way to look wow. at it. I, I never thought about that. Me neither, actually. So, yeah, you... Uh, th my opinion of the Yaks has changed dramatically because of this episode. Except for the prince. Well, yeah. I'm calling for a coup. <laughs> but then again, I'm calling for a hippogriff coup. I'm calling for a yak coup. Be glad Luna's on the throne, because I might still call for an equestrian coup otherwise. <laughs> yeah. One through under the, over the cuckoo nest. <laughs> but anywho, we get to see Gallus. And Gal. well, this is a pretty short one, because the basic theme of Griffinstone is Griffinstone stinks. <laughs> yep. So Gallus doesn't even have a chance to explain his situation before he gets permission slip to the beak. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And he's... Sorry, I just have to say, I just to ask, like... What is even the point with Gallus? I mean, okay, I do know, I do understand he needs permission slip from the elders and it's a funny joke, but I'm just wondering, like, why is he even back at Griffin Stone? Why not stay at the school like Harry Potter? Well, Harry had to go home. Well, most of the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, no. he always had to go home, no matter how much he hated that family. Uh, okay, maybe I don't remember Harry Potter as much as I do. Gasp. It's been a while. Quickly, everyone. Shamicus Totalcus. It's All right, been so let's a just write down the list and if, uh, that to the list of uh, with Safi. Norman has to watch Harry Potter. <laughs> All of them. I've seen them in the theaters, well, too. Oh, you gotta yeah. rewatch it. Oh, that I don't in have one time. City. Oh, that I don't have the time. But Make anywho, the time. next person. Don't make me come over there. Oh, please do. <laughs> Anyway, now we check in with the changelings, where, again, their literal sense. This is a family permission slip. <laughs> and so even Ocellus's younger siblings uh, must sign the permission slip, they think. <laughs> and so and so do the parents, which, again, raises any number of questions. I guess Chrysalis wasn't the uh, queen ant, as we sometimes assume. Mm, oh, <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Uh, the way I look at it is that they are a hive and they have a hive mindset where everybody needs to sign the permission slip. That's well, how I look at it. It's going to need a lot of permission forms. Oh. Yeah. Twilight didn't include enough lines. <laughs> uh, but no, this is fascinating. This is fascinating. And to what you say, Silver, about uh, who, Ocellus having a parents and whatnot, it could be that this is just a family unit that kind of wanted to bond with each other. Maybe it's always possible that they divide uh, the grubs or hatchlings or whatever you want to call them into parental clusters. New strategy. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But Oce Ocellus looks like she could be the direct. Well, okay. They all look like they could be related. <laughs> Earth, the inbreeding. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> but... Lastly, we get Silverstream, and she's she, her 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 story or her montage is fun. <laughs> Indeed, because she summarizes everything and displays early artistic skill as she draws everyone, including all her friends making a scared face. Ah! 
Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. This moment also kind of reminds me of that one moment, Despicable, Despicable Me, where Gru's showing <laughs> the pictures, and then he ends with him sitting on the toilet. I need to re- remind myself, is that where he's outlining how to steal the moon? Yes. Okay, thank God. That means- <laughs> I thought that was... Sorry. I thought you were talking about the scene where he shows the storybook to the kids. It's like, wait. Oh, no, did no. He, <laughs> did he show that? I was like, no. Ah, ah, that would ah. be terrible if he showed that. <laughs> and You're sick. You're sick. <laughs> it's not me. You're sick for thinking of that. <laughs> no, you I'm talking about Groot, but yes, Torterra, you are sick. I mean, you, <laughs> but... <laughs> you're taking drugs off the trees on your back. I, mean... I can't even reach my own back. Oh, but... <laughs> oh I see. Oh, so you, so you employ labor. That's even worse. But, <laughs> but, but anywho, uh, I do like the star um star stream was it no um silver stream silver, silver stream yes oh do you want to call do you want to call her Vincent Tong too <laughs> no uh but but anywho um we get to see her parents or her dad without the armor so that's cool oh maybe you should just call her yeah Lauren Jackson is done explaining things to her family. <laughs> <laughs> and they sign and they hug. But but the family is a nice representation of uh, the divided hippogriff culture. Mm-hmm. One, one sure. lives on the land and flies to the skies. Another lives in the sea. and they But they're still a family. True, 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 true. Although, although I do find it kind of stubborn on the mom's part that she doesn't even try to change into a hippogriff to have this meeting. Because she doesn't have a necklace. That's true. What? I don't see it on her. I thought they all had necklaces. Oh, yeah, they do, but she doesn't have it on now. Yeah, that's weird. Well, maybe... Well, that's just highly irresponsible of her. You know what? I got to double check. Uh, or, uh, I could do it later. But, yeah. Well, I, I'm looking at the pictures right now, and I can confirm there is no necklace to be had. Even of Okay. She has a necklace, but it doesn't have the coral or the little uh, seashell with the pearl shard in it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I've got the conch! <laughs> Uh, but anywho then we get sandbar and oh god what have you done well i was about to get there and after all of the creatures oh, oh i see how i see how it is just summarize them then leave them oh no i mean uh we're about to get to sandbar soon ish so all of the creatures after they get their permission sleep go back to ponyville and go to the cave meet up with sandbar and sandbar shows the cave and everybody's shocked because where's the tree? Where did it go? I got rid of it. I love how casually he says that. Damn, Sandbar, you cold. Yeah. Must be putting on a lot of muscles, though, just to get all that out. <laughs> Maybe that's when Yona started to develop some feelings. I don't think so, like, man. Oh, po- pony kind of buff. <laughs> I don't even think so, man. She's oblivious. You calling her stupid? No. Oh, God. <laughs> Norman, how could you? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, what but anywho, uh, let's see. Um, yes. Uh, they argue for a bit because everybody has different point of view on how they should memorize or memorialize the tree. Um, we, we have, well, Sandbar throwing the, go, throwing the old and taking in the new. You know, a fresh start and whatnot. Kind of okay, and planting a sapling to represent the Tree of Harmony. Okay, I can see that. While uh, Ocellus wants to start a Zen garden, Gallus wants to start a tourist attraction, and so on. And yeah, everybody has their own visions of how to memorialize the tree. And they start arguing. And that's not good. But it is natural. I mean, this is part of the fun... You have you basically are showing yeah they're friends but that doesn't mean they're you know they get along all the time. True, 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 true. And well, once they finish, not really finish, but once they redirect their target, they ask Yona and what do you think? Well, who do you agree with? And Yona is just neutral because she wants to do whatever everybody wants to do. But oh, she's cha- chaotic neutral. Yeah, the best kind of neutral. Yeah. But, well, everybody says it's a lame idea, and yeah, they go their separate ways. So, we see, like I mentioned before, Gala starting up a museum, attracting ponies to visit the cave, 
and we see Cheer Lee. Wait, what? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's Cheer Lee or just someone. Ooh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's her twin sister. Ooh, yeah, the wrestler. I mean, all ponies kind of look the same. I, 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 oh, I, I. oh, now that that's speciesist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess that's true. I can't complain either because po- some Pokemon look the same too. <laughs> I mean, really, I expect that from Ember. <laughs> but you, Torterra, I think you need to take another puff of the happy smoke. <laughs> oh, boys. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I think you're right. <laughs> oh, oh, he admits it. Oh, boy. But anyway. you're not supposed to tell him my secret. Now the secret's out. <laughs> Dude, your secret stash is on your back. <laughs> It could have been a pretty tree to look at, you know. But anywho, we we see Smolder smashing rocks, uh, trying to memorialize a tree in a rock statue. And hey, it's cool, I guess. Yeah. She kind of got it. I guess. Granted, the tree is so complex, eh? I couldn't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> With perfect visual. You'd need a photographic memory. Well, um, talking about photographic memory, we got an artist on. And Silverstream really drew well. And what was her thing again? Impressionism? Well, a person commented on my video that made a lot of sense. It could instead be expressionism. Ah. But there's a lot of isms out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mentioned ism reminds me of Street Fighter Alpha Tree. <laughs> Let's see here. Expressionism, a style of painting, music, or drama in which the artist or writer seeks to express emotional experience rather than impressions of the external world. And seems that way, too. But she's, in some ways, doing both. There's impressionism in that she's drawing the elements, the physical elements of harmony. And then there's her emotions, that's the expressionism. So what you have here is a dualism. Does that even exist? It does now. (laughs) I mean, there's a lot of isms, so... Yeah. But anywho, we get Ocellus building a rock garden, and yeah, this is just clashing, yo. Like, this thing is not awesome at all. And they start bickering and start fighting, and it all goes to heck. And they argue for a bit until Yona snaps. And just says, like, you guys are missing the point here. We, where's, where's our friendship? Like, we should do this together. Like, the only reason why we asked for the permission slip was to be here and remember the tree together and stuff. Everybody kind of agreed and says, like, what do we do and stuff. Yona has an idea. Go round back and pull a cart with the tree of harmony. And everybody's shocked. Like, what? The tree? How? But, but how? We thought Sandbar threw it away. And Sandbar says, oh no, it was just in the corner. You know how heavy that thing is? <laughs> Actually, there's one thing I want to point out, though. Is that in all the destruction that's been going on after Gallus and Smolder dropped the, I guess, the, the rock tree, and it starts rolling towards Sandbar, Yona comes in to save, Ga- uh, I almost call him Gallus. <laughs> Yon- Yona comes in to save Sandbar. Mm-hmm. She saves Vincent Tong. Yeah. <laughs> now we just need Vincent Tong to say, Hi-ho, Yona! Hey! <laughs> oh, man. Silver, you can do it, right? <laughs> I can talk to him if I see him again soon. <laughs> but, uh, okay, after all this happens, Torterra, what? What What happens? Uh, what? Yeah, you, uh, you mentioned want to point something out. Oh, about Yona saving Sandboy? Mm-hmm, and stuff? Yeah. Oh, I, th- I thought you were going to continue. No, right? no, I didn't you, think you, I was going to continue it. No, you, 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 it's, it's your, it's your floor. All right. Well, after Yona decides to save Sandbar, they all fight at each other, and you know it's all your fault that you ruined this. And Gallus is like, "What? You ruined my museum!" And so she's like, "You ruined my paintings!" And uh, pretty much Yona's had enough, and she's like, "It's not about honoring the tree. It's about uh, wait—is honoring and remembering the same thing?" Honoring is more positive. You can remember someone who hurt you or someone who said unpleasant things about you, but you don't honor them. Yeah, but this is more of a positive thing. That's true. Yeah, you were saying, Norman, after Yona pulls out the tree? Uh, Oh, yeah, pull out the tree, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, they all kind of think of an idea of what to do with the 
I would. Is it called? Is it actually called a carcass? No, no, right. Actually, yes, I believe it is a carcass. Really? No. I think so. Let's do quick Google. I thought a tree is just called a. Actually, no. Wait, never mind. <laughs> tree carcass. But anywho, um, while Silver goes looks for that, I'm just gonna carry on. Um, Yona decides to build a clubhouse or a treehouse or whatever it's called, and yay, we get a musical number. So, they clean up the cave, uh, do a musical montage and stuff. And I have to say, the musical montage is kind of awesome. Really? I, I felt like some of the voices didn't lend themselves well to singing. It's... How do I put this? Like, like who? Silva? Huh? Like who? Well, Smolder, I think so. Hmm, then I need to re-listen. But I, I feel like it was okay. Like, even though some of the... Voices don't lend themselves well to the song, but I, I feel like that gives it a bit of character. You know what I mean? Also, apparently, carcass is by definition only the body of an animal. Ah, so I was wrong. So, what do you call a dead tree? Oh, I just searched it up. A dead tree is called a snag. Snag. Oh, okay. Oh, we we hit a snag. Uh, really? I thought a snag was just something you got your feet cut on. Well, that's what it says. It says a snag refers to a standing dead or dying tree. Well, we learned something today. Awesome. Oh, yep. A dead tree. So, does this mean one day that we'll see a snag on your back? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, at least I don't think so. Uh, I mean, circle of life, well, as soon as the snag's off my back, I we grow another one. You think? Ah, Torterra, there's a dead tree on your back. <laughs> it's called a snag. Call it a snag. But anywho, but anywho. Uh, we get to see the students building the treehouse. Musical number was harder it is. It was okay. It was to me. I felt like this were the voice actors singing, not um, some doubles, voice doubles, or something like that. So I, I felt like this was cool. It was cool. The only thing for me though about the song is that the singer for Ocellus is the same singer for Pinkie Pie, and it's kind of hard to get that. It's like it almost sounds like Pinky singing for Ocellus, because you hear Pinky singing voice for such a very long time. No, really, no. I didn't notice. And then in the midst of the song, San, uh, now I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, now Gallus gets tied to a pillar, and it's like, oh, God, we're back in Maracas Ladybug. What's the safe word? What's the safe word? Oh, my God. No, the memories. Here's the funny part. Here's the, here's the funny part. It's him doing it to himself. What? Well, maybe he's into that. <laughs> Uh, you're sick. <laughs> yeah, you're sick now. Giggity. <laughs> but anywho, after it's done, we get to see the finished treehouse. Oh, oh, what? There it is. <laughs> Sorry, I had to grab my sound effect box, but you know, it's just like Silver Stream. Get the get the crystal paddle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, we get to see the finished treehouse, and yeah, it looks good. <laughs> I mean, as long as they're not building the treehouse on me, then that's fine. <laughs> the safety inspector is going to have a field day with this. Just think back to the Q-Mark Crusaders in uh, the Stairmaster <laughs> trying to repair a table. <laughs> that clubhouse needs to be put out of its misery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anywho, uh, they all go to the clubhouse and, you know, just appreciate their work and whatnot. Suddenly, the ground shake and... All of the students get far away as possible from the clubhouse. Suddenly, magic happens. And the clubhouse rises to the top, destroying the old castle of the two sisters and creating this clubhouse. Yay! And denying me my place with Caster Quill. I'm so upset. Yeah, man. That place will be missed. Yep. Sorry about that. But anyway, we get this new shiny tree. And we get, quote-unquote, an explanation of how this school was made. Yay. I think. The only thing that's missing is an advertisement. Buy our toys! Yeah, that's true. For this one, I haven't seen anything. Oh, you think they'd show something by now, but no. No, no advertisement. No. Probably is one of those things where season's about to end. Not, let's cut our losses on toys. Hmm, who knows? Who can say? But I li I like the design. I like it more than Twilight's castle. Yeah. Oh yes, definitely. Yep. Yes. Uh, Mostly because it, it it's brighter. Yeah, that, that's also true. And 
I, I don't know. I mean, to me, I like the color pairing with the... When you look at it, right, it's brighter, but it still has that same color tone as the castle. And pair it with the dark, bleak, old castle ruins and stuff, it kind of stands out and really looks nice. I especially like how they have um, the, the leaves on there. Like, it's not exactly leaves, but it has that feeling like the, um, I think it's called cherry blossoms. Yeah, more or less, yes. You can find them around Washington. At least it doesn't look like a, a giant middle finger like Twilight's castle. <laughs> what is this finger you talk about? I mean, come on. I'm not the only one that sees that, right? I will now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Although, it raises the question with, with both this and Twilight's castle. Do they, like, uh, shed their quote-unquote leaves does, in the winter? Does Twilight Castle have leaves? I don't think so. I don't think it does. We should leave well enough alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for this one, I don't know. We'll we'll see, we'll see. But um, the Tree of Harmony represented by Twilight comes out and says, because of your friendship, uh, we are able to build this tree house. Now, enjoy your stay. Yay. So, that happened. Twilight pops in saying, Okay, we feel a burst of magic. What happened? What happened? What happened? Are you guys safe? I felt a great disturbance in the force. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the student says, Yeah, we're, we're all cool. We're all cool. Suddenly, Twilight says, Yo, what's that behind you? Like, when, when did they... What? And the student just says, Yeah, about that. We were about to ask you and stuff. And, well, uh, Twilight just asks, What did you do? And they just say that we built a tree house, suddenly magic, and it became this. And Twilight was hey, happy about it. Like, yay, my students are learning friendship. Yay, now, now let's go in and check this out. Like, I bet it's going to be five ninety nine. And they can live here now, so I can save on lodging costs. Huzzah! Not really, that's how they make their extra income. And with that, episode ends. So, let's hit into well, final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, it's a very fun episode in my eyes. But it's has this risk of losing our attention because we have this montage of them getting permission. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, what's the point of this? And then you have their different views on how to honor the tree. Okay, does any of that come back to the actual clubhouse? You know, does, does Gallus use some of the props from his... Uh, a tree memorial museum does he use that as part of the structure nope so after a while you're just like okay i feel like i've seen a lot of things happen but i haven't seen it build mm. and it's only when i thought hang on maybe i'm looking at it too much on the characters what am i really seeing here i'm seeing their respective cultures influencing their decisions i'm seeing how this group of friends is coming together and it's is it a melting pot? Is it a salad bowl? The classic questions. I'm hungry now. <laughs> when I viewed it through that lens, it made a lot more sense and I had more fun on the second viewing. But it takes a little shift in perspective to feel like it has a little bit more purpose. Mm, all right. And yeah, it's not wrong because this episode is kind of different when you take a look-see at what is trying to say or trying to present to the audience we start out with the most obvious permission slip and like you mentioned before each culture have different ways of getting their permission uh, with ember no sorry not ember with smolder it's about show of strength with yona it's about well the moment and this is this is pretty pretty normal Gallus is about get out of my face I don't care. Ocellus is about but, family or the unit as a whole and for Silverstream it's about her artwork. I'm just joshing here but still. You were saying Silver? Well Gallus it is get out of my face but it's also make a buck. Yeah that's but that's also the Griffin culture kind of. Exactly. Yeah. That's the culture influencing his decisions. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, when we go back to the part where they have their own ideas how to uh, memorialize the tree. And yeah, oh, wow. This, this is kind of fascinating. Like I say, it's more fun when you turn things on their head just a little. Mm -hmm. And we, we get to see 
yeah, their, their culture at work here because Gallus here thinks that make a buck, get paid and stuff. And, well, how do I put this? I can feel like if he did things the wrong way and mingled with the wrong crowd, he could have been Flame of Phlegm. Or worse. Yeah, true that. Even better. Dear God. Even better than those two. Hmm. Or worse. Mm, true that. Silver, anything more? Uh, nothing more on my end. Just enjoyable, but it runs the risk of losing people at points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tara, what about you? I, I thought it was an okay episode for me. I mean, it was fun, I'll agree. But some parts uh, pretty much were going to lose me at sometimes. Like, with the montages, first with the uh, permission slips, and then with the... I mean, I enjoyed the song, but then we got a montage of them building, and usually some episodes include a lesson, but for here, it's like, I guess the lesson is it's okay to fight as long as you all agree with something in the end. Like, that's one thing that's kind of confusing me, because some episodes have a lesson at, at the end. A clear lesson, but this lesson here is a bit muddy. Yes. All right, I get you, I get you. And yeah, as for me, I like this episode. This episode is very entertaining, and I like episodes where <laughs> um, this sounds bad, but I like the episodes where the main six are not involved. We get to see something new, like we get to see the students doing something for a change. So I like that. And with what you mentioned before, guys, like the permission slip signing montage, um, to me that's something very fascinating part of their culture and when the way that they try to memorialize the tree was also fascinating and kind of gives you a bit of an insight into their the way of thinking because Gallus here is a griffin and wow this is kind of a stereotype where okay griffins need to make a buck because they want to live or get away from griffin stone so they can stay at some place much better than that. Then you get um, Ocellus who wants to build a rock garden, a meditating zen place where I, I guess what, it works for her in her kingdom and stuff and so on. And did we ever see any art from Silverstream like showing at least she has interest in it? Not that I can recall. So this is something new, right? Like this is a new development. Yes, and I love how defensive she is about it. It's called a presentism! Uh, yeah, like in your video you mentioned that, hey, uh, we she's living in the ocean for a while, so painting is not going to work for her. Nope, but it's something mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. And so on. And in the end, like for the lesson here, I, I feel like it's... First, it's about communication, uh if you have something you guys should communicate so you can be a better unit and then it's about compromise and stuff i mean this is all basic stuff don't you guys agree well it it shows that i like the line if things don't if things don't fit there's lots of glue mm -hmm. <laughs> that describes friendships in a nutshell true true sometimes the dynamics don't always fit but there's a bond that keeps things together true 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 and that's why you need glue yeah <laughs> Uh, Although, in this realm of of sentient ponies, where do they get the glue? Well, chemicals. Okay, but you know, glue made from horses. I'm not that. Anyway, moving yeah. on, moving on. So, yeah. Um, no, 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 we're going down the Stark Rabbit. No, no, <laughs> I don't want to. You can't pick me. But anywho, um, after this is done... We get to see... Well, they're, they're done. Like, yeah, I, I like this. Wait, that's it? Yeah, I like this episode. <laughs> Silver's detracting away from the ending. Yeah. So, yeah, episode ends. I, I, I love this one. I love this one. So, anywho, um, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it's time to check back with the IDW comics as the main six go hunting. Oh, wow. Nice to. Ooh. So, that... Well, sorry? Yes. We'll be talking about My Little Pony, issue 66. Yes. Uh, ponies go Hollywood. This is interesting. Yes, we, we we shall talk about it when we review it. Yes. So, anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mbshow. 
And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same name with a new Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comic every uh, night before a new episode. True, true. And you can find me on YouTube. Just type in Silver Quill or After the Fact, and the algorithm should at least point you to something. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> it's hard to know with that damn thing anymore. Uh, maybe we insert the key word or the, what you would call this, tag, the MBS show. Maybe, maybe that work, yeah? <laughs> Oh, you opportunist. <laughs> Why not? Uh, but anywho, Tara, and, uh, sorry, Silva, oh, anything more? And, oh, wait. Yes, you can find me on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays, posting comic reviews and editorials. Ah. And you can find me at, at BronyCon. Yeah, this is the last BronyCon. And wow, I, I have insider reports that getting a panel for this year's convention is not easy. I heard the failure rate is high. Well, yeah, there there's a lot of people applying and they've only got so much space and time. True uh-huh. that, true that. And since this is the last one, everybody's trying to, well, do something. Get their... Make their, make their mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately for this show, hey, the process of just getting to the state is hard enough. Remember me, Silva. <laughs> I'll remember you if you can make it worth my while. <laughs> oh, 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 I got no idea what to do. <laughs> I need an adult. Yeah. Do you have? Do you have twenty dollars? Twenty dollars, uh, probably. <laughs> okay, then I can remember you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love. Oh, Tortera getting just a little frisky. Well, I'm playing some music for you. <laughs> oh boy, Tara, you should, you're oh. going to Puerto all right? Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Sweet, sweet little innocent drug huffing Tortara. <laughs> so, anywho, for you guys who will be going to BronyCon, make sure to take a look see at uh, Silver's panel and whatnot and go say hi and, you know, just talk to the part of the NBA show crew, excluding me. Uh sad. <laughs> Um, it's okay, well, you're with us in spirit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And and Safi will be there yep. as well. Yeah. Lucky North Americans. <laughs> I'm not American. I said North Americans. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So anyway, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, they can f- easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And, well, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion, podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Black. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zisir Vekwil. And I have been the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs>so, since we're on the topic of uh, trees, let me talk to you about a creepy Pokedex entry about a stump Pokemon. Oh, no. A stump? What, does he evolve after he gets cut down? <laughs> no, he evolves by growing into a bigger tree. Okay. But the Pokedex entry for this small Pokemon, it says, According to old tales, these Pokemon are stump possessed by the spirit of children who died while lost in the forest. Oh, my... You know, for kids. Oh. Uh... Goddamn. Goddamn.